Tonight, I'm unboxing the Ring Doorbell Pro 2. It's April of 2021, and yesterday a whole bunch of websites came out with stories, quick reviews of the Pro 2, talking about increased resolution and a bigger visual field angle, 150 degrees to be able to see packages um, below you, meaning on your front step. That makes sense. A lot has happened in the five years since I wrote about the original Ring Pro. The original Ring doorbell I had for a couple months and returned it, and that was because it didn't have five gigahertz and it was lacking some other features. And way back then, Jamie Semenoff, the now CEO who got bought by Amazon, the company, um, I actually talked to him. There was a little bit of a mishap with uh, someone else's audio in the early stages. He actually uh, responded to that. I appreciated that. Well, again, a lot has happened since April of 20. 16 when I first wrote about the Ring Pro on my front door. It is not cheap. There's been a lot of controversy, especially in the last year or two with cooperation with police authorities that people are not too enthused about. I'm going to link to an article, I think it was CNET just yesterday, that really summed it up nicely. All the kind of philosophical differences you might have with Amazon or Ring and data sharing with authorities. For me, in my use case, it's simply about trying to get better front step footage, better front step coverage, with a better visual angle. And tonight I'm gonna to unbox the Ring Pro 2 and I'm gonna compare it to the original Ring. And I have them right behind me on the workbench here. Quick look at the unboxing. We'll look at the uh, watt burn of the original and the new one. And I'll hook it up to the Wi-Fi, which is very strong in my house and right nearby with an access point. And then um, I'll be mounting in the house and seeing how it goes in the coming months. But this is just an initial cursory review here at littleguyblogger.tinkertry.com where it is hard to get products like this, uh, The Verge and all the big sites you know, had them uh, yesterday and then a wave about a month ago. Well, I don't get any pre-release samples. I just paid extra expedited shipping and pre-ordered this months ago when this was first announced. Straight from Ming.com, getting a substantial discount, getting the price closer to 200 rather than 250 So hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, let's get started. All right, here's our setup. We've got a watt meter showing six watts. The power supply itself, when no doorbell is hooked up to it, draws three watts. And with the power supply, it's drawing six. And then we have an interesting message here saying, front doorbell, poor voltage. I think what it means is too high. This thing's 24 volts. I had trouble with 16 volts of the adapter that was with my house. So just a couple of things to point out. And now it says front doorbell online, poor voltage went away. So it's a little weird, but it could be just the short cable length versus the solid copper wire in my home with a very long cable length that seemed to have a voltage drop. Anyhow, let's get started with the new one. Um, and we can actually compare. We'll be able to see the uh, field of view, how wide it is in the uh, original one. Let me do live view right here. And it's going to be a little hard to see with, well, actually get a sense of how big is this uh, overhead LED panel set of four up here. Uh, so we can kind of do a before and after there. Not the best, you know, boxing job here. This came straight from Ring, but that's okay. 3D motion detection. So there's a bit of radar function, some new ranging technology here where instead of using just the camera to, and a 2D image to try to reconstruct a 3D world to have a clue if something's close or far and motion zones, instead now we have a new sensor built in the front. And uh, I'm actually curious if we can see that. All right, let's have a look at the box before we do too much here. 3D motion detection is what we were just, what I was just talking about. Wider field of view, saying head to toe. Well, <laughs> I don't know about toe. His feet are still cut off. 150 is not 180. So I'm just going to point that out. It's a little bit weird. But precision on the motion. So that could be interesting to make sure we have more accuracy on the detection. Uh, what else is new here? Uh, I don't know. It's the first time I'm reading this right here with you. I'm trying to get this installed. We're going to have to work on tomorrow. And let's see... Um, I actually expect some packages tomorrow, so during my normal workday, it'll be interesting to see if the pop-ups work well and the um, alerts to motion and so forth. All right, we've got a lot going on in this very densely packed box. Let's start with the tool. All right, so they have a new tool with this fixed. No longer is it removable with Phillips. It's just one tool. Moving along, we have an bunch of pieces. Uh, let's get to that last. Okay, now the box is empty. And let's see what we have in here. Wow. So it comes with, looks like, I don't know, 25 degrees, 30 degrees, something like that. 
So if we want to tilt one direction or the other, we got that. Kind of wish it came with a tilt down adapter, but it does not. We've got a sticker for our window if we want. And instructions. All right. Product information. I don't think there's anything in there of interest. Quick start. QR code to read. Okay, that's going to be handy. And then finally, a user guide. Talking about the hardware, the screws, wire nuts, alternative power cables. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to need to deal with any of that. I'm going to turn off power and connect this. I'm not doing anything with the doorbell chime or any of that. Just took it up straight tonight. A little bit about the faceplate and the two screws. Probably going to use the screws that are in my house already. And that's what I have, a little hole in the wood in the trim of the house. All right, let's, let's get going with the ring device. So again, I'm not going to need any of this. I could do soldered in a wire nut here and then just slide this on the back if I want, but I'm probably just going to go straight attachment. Less points of failure in my mind. Well, Pro, Pro Power Kit. This would be a thing to go in the chime. And notice 16 volts, max 24 volts is where I am at. I am not going to use this. I do no longer, I no longer use my front door chime that came with the house. For our, I don't need to worry about that. All right, dimensions. Let's have a look. Looks a little shallower, and we've got metal showing in the side, so probably better heat dissipation through some metal that's exposed to the environment there. This whole back feels like it's acting as a heat sink. So it feels a little less plasticky in the back and a little more solid in the hand. Um, hmm, I don't have my fleothermal camera handy right now, but this is actually a little warm in the back. I would say that's probably uh, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So that's interesting. So I think this heat sink is going to serve me well. Um, but again, my mine was facing west-southwest. Hot sun all up in the summer and it survived fine. So right here, let's have a look. Ring Doorbell Pro 2, model SAT-252. Very tiny print on there, 16 to 24 volts. All right, the front, we've got a sensor there, sensor there. Not sure which is which. And we also have a silver color, which doesn't match my house. So, I don't know, are these compatible? No. <laughs> you can see quite a difference in shape. So that's unfortunate. Oh well. Um, don't really know if these are replaceable, but looks like I want to take that off. We've got the uh, security screw there. Yes, this does come off. So it looks like um, we can get other colors for the front plate if we want. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can get some uh, good lighting in the sensors there. Looks like they've got some uh, coating there for sure on this glass. And a very wide angle lens you can see in there. And the button, eh. Still feels not amazing. All right, height. One millimeter shorter, maybe two millimeters shorter. A little weird. Width. One millimeter wider, maybe two. Um, let's see. Well, that's about it for the physical form factor. Now it's trying to try to wire it up here. So we're gonna need voltage on here. So remember I said I'm gonna unplug it first. Let's go ahead and time lapse this little section here and speed this up. Camera switch done. Go to devices. And we've got a front doorbell offline. So I'm the master account holder. Um, should be able to remove that one because it's not coming back under general. Remove the device. Great. And let's add the new one, doorbell. Scan the QR code right off of there. 
There we go. Pick the address. I have two. I have some devices at a secondary address that I manage for family. Front door is where this goes. It has been installed. Try a new bezel if you want. Waiting for setup mode. Well, it's already in setup mode with the swirly light, so we should be good here soon. The light is spinning. Join the Wi-Fi. Ring doorbell is connected to the Ring app. Ring doorbell is connecting to the internet. Just a moment. Rome wasn't built in a day. Your Ring doorbell is ready to go. With Ring, you're always home. Invited the shared user. Email address is already typed in. I'm skipping link devices. Going to optimize motion. Okay, update complete. Okay, let's go live. All right, it is clearly much more wide angle. You can see those four ceiling tiles there. So dramatically wider view. And that is gonna be a good thing for seeing when packages arrive. Uh, let's see, yeah, let's see. sound, yes. echo, yep. What else can we do here? Um, so I'm gonna to wanna to go through all those settings, including video settings, HDR, I'm gonna to wanna to turn on. Decreases battery life. Okay, I don't care about that. Tap camera for live view. Sure. Night vision. Okay, I'm going to leave that the way it is. See if it looks any different. So HDR is now on. Am I more saturated in the dark areas? Hard to say. I don't know. Anyhow, this is good. I'm done. My device shows, obviously it's going to show strong Wi-Fi if we look at its device health. We're going to see the firmware up to date. Ooh, it doesn't give me a version. Transformer voltage, good. That's all a little bit odd, but all right. Um, the thing I didn't check out yet is the spacing of the screws. I sure hope that didn't change, right? So let's take off that bezel and let's compare the back plate. I really don't want to make new screw hole positions in my wood in the wall, and it looks like we have a match. So, oops, it's off camera. So that's a good thing, <laughs> definitely. Um, kind of an important little detail, but again, who wants to make more holes in their home? Um, again, that's stranded cover. You should use solid doorbell wire. I just didn't have it handy in such a length for this quick video here. So now I'm going to go back to putting the transformer where it belongs in the house and put the doorbell in the front of the house and uh, call it a day. You can see some serious weathering going on with that. Um, is it plastic in the front or what? I don't know, but this one does appear to be glass and nice and clean for now. Quite a bit of lag. So we got about a second of latency there. We go full screen here. What's that do? Aha, uh -huh. goes horizontal. Can we pan? Yes, we can, to kind of look around. Interesting. All right, so here we go, doorbell push, timing test. Ready, notifications are back on. That was very quick. Okay, that was pretty darn snappy. Very nice. 
So one thing I forgot to show you is that under the hamburger menu, the top left three bars, tap on that and you've got a what's new section in the Ring app. And scrolling around, I realized, oh, I never set up 3D motion detection to avoid unwanted alerts. That's using the new feature in the Ring Video Doorbell Pro 2. They call it radar. Um, 3D motion detection, overview, tap on continue. It confirms where it's installed and my service address. I make sure that's right. Push pin was a little bit uh, off, so I moved it to the front of my house. Sorry about the blurring I need to do for privacy reasons, but you'll get the gist. Once we get that push pin just right, click on the blue continue button. And next, you're gonna see orientation, which way things are aiming. So we got a live view out the front, video doorbell, and then we've got um, a blue sweeping area on the bottom screen there where you need to aim it in the right direction. So basically changing it from a, looks like it defaulted to north or something. So got that all fixed. And then I tap on the blue continue button when I'm ready, got it oriented perfectly. Next, detection range. So I cranked mine from 15 feet all the way over to 30 feet. Then tap the blue button to continue. Setting saved, all set. And then it was time to start test. So now I'm outside walking around and soon you're gonna see some colorful dots on the left edge there. And that represents me and how far I am from the camera. And you can see I'm right at the periphery, I'm right at the edge. And it says walk to the edge and then hit confirm. Which I did. And that was it. And notice I got an alert. There's motion at your front doorbell, so it detected me. So that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, please consider at least a thumbs up. Maybe even a comment, even better, a subscribe if you found this video valuable. Also, don't forget to click on the link here at the end that goes right to the article, a detailed article, um, more about my experience working with this doorbell, and I'll update that article over time. Thanks again for watching, and thanks for visiting Tinker Try. Bye for now.